I want to show you how you can use Connect Visualization Services to deliver real-time data dashboards to users in your organization. If you have folks who have data and want to visualize it in real-time cloud dashboards, you can absolutely use Visualization Services for this. And specifically, we're going to start in data services where we already have streams in the sequential data store coming from our on-premises physical assets that we want to visualize and display. And in the Asset Explorer, we've74 an asset called Machine74656, where we have grouped several of the real-time streams that are related to this piece of equipment that we want to analyze and visualize and use in our cloud dashboards. And our goal is to present this data in a manner that folks can securely access from anywhere where they have a cloud connection. So to go ahead and get started with this, I'll copy my asset name, and I want to search in visualization services under browse and assets for this exact same asset name. And this is going to search through all the list of synced assets, find this particular one, and you can see sure enough, there it is. And it's going to bring up all of the related dynamic properties. And it gives me a default content item called the status board. And I'll open up just to show you what this looks like. When I set it to the last hour, you can see this is showing all of these properties here from my asset, but now as a content item called the status board, we've got the current values, their trends and a little spark line on the right. And I actually really like this. I want to use this in my dashboard. So I'll save this as a piece of content. I'll call this all properties. I'll say that it's visible to everyone in my team. And I will link this to the asset so that anyone who wants to find this content and any other ones can search for it by that asset name. And with this done, I've created the first piece of content that I can use in my dashboard. But I want other content items. I want to display this data in other ways. Uh, so one of the easy ways to do this is to start with these items and to just edit this content. So I'll duplicate this tab because I'll come back to it later. And to change how I want this data to be represented, I'll go to properties. And if you ever want to change the list of data items that's on a piece of content, you can click and hit remove. And now I'm only looking at my acceleration readings, which is what I want. Now I want to change representation from this status board to looking at this over time. So I'll click line chart when I want to change the visual type. And now sure enough, I can see these all plotted on a single axis, but I want them to be stacked. Perfect. So now we can see how they all show up as uh, on each of their own trends. Excellent. I'll save this and I'll save this as its own new name. I'll call this stacked acceleration. Same thing, visible to my team, map to this asset. And when I save a copy, now I'm creating a brand new separate content item. And this later I'm going to place onto a dashboard that I can share with my users. Now, I want to create additional items here too. So I'll change this again. I've got multiple options to choose. I'll pick column chart because I want to see what my peak accelerations are over 15 minute intervals. So I'll set custom duration and I'll set this to be 15 minutes and I have my statistics set as my maximum. And now this is going to show me perfect my 15 minute acceleration peaks for this piece of rotating machinery. Absolutely perfect. This is absolutely a content item I want to include on my dashboard. My users want to see this data. So again, I'll hit save in the top right. I'll give it a different name. I'll call this my acceleration bar chart and I'll hit save a copy. So you can see we've only been doing this for a handful of minutes. Already we've created multiple different pieces of content to show this data. But there's also the temperatures here. So let me go back to that other tab that I created. And now I want to remove all streams except for the temperatures two and three. So I'll hit edit. I'll remove my first three accelerations and hit remove. And perfect, I've got my two temperatures, my chassis temperature and my board temperature. Now I also want to show these over time. So under visual settings, I'll hit change. I'll set this to be a line chart and select. Perfect. And I actually do like these on a single access. So I'll just hit save. And in the top, I'll set I want to name this as my OPC UA temperatures. It's linked to my asset, shared with my team. I'll hit save a copy. So perfect. You see, I'm creating lots of different content items here. But I want to create an XY plot next. So I'll hit change in XY plot and I'll show the relationship between this because I know I've got different operating modes here. So I know I want to see how those temperature changes uh, as this machine goes through different states. So this by itself, this is perfect all as is. I'll just rename this to be my XY and hit save a copy. Now I can also create content items completely from scratch if I wanted. I could just hit create in visual and I could say I want to, let's see, I want to show uh, data over time here. I want to see some summary statistics as well. So specifically I'll pick summary chart and hit select 
And now for this particular visual content, I can hit add tags and I can search for my OPC UA streams from Connect Data Services. Perfect. I'll pick my two and three, my temperature ones. Uh, actually, in this one, you know what? I just want to pick two because after asking my users, I realized that what their need is, is they instantaneously always want to see what is my maximum temperature right now uh, over the most recent time period. So I can say, OK, let me go to maximum as my statistic. And now whenever they open this display, they can say, perfect. I instantaneously see my max. It was 84. I'll give this a name just like before. I'll share it with my team. I'll link this to the asset. And for this particular one, that name will be, uh, I'll just call this like my max temperature um, because people are going to want to see this instantaneously for the chassis. So I'll say this. And now I've got a good collection of visual content, I've got a bunch of different visuals, and I want to add these to a dashboard. I want to arrange them and shape them because of uh, certain requirements my users have given. I can create a free form one on my canvas. I'll just create grid and then it'll let me auto resize and auto refactor these uh, in a real useful way that will sheet later. So I'll browse through my existing content. I'll simply search using that asset name and got it. It'll bring up all the ones that I've just created, all six pieces. And it's going to drop these for me right on my uh, canvas and it's going to drop them for me all automatically resize all of them perfect um, and now we can start changing their dimensions and their placement exactly the way i want you can see that for the stacked acceleration i want that to maybe be a little bit wider uh, and you know i know with them stacked it's going to take up a lot of you know vertical space so i'll start vertically resizing some of these symbols just to get them to be just the right height that i want for this dashboard um, and now, of course, I also want to make sure that when I'm done with my vertical resizing, um, I look at this status board and since it's a smaller width, it's not showing those real useful visual indicators that I wanted. So I'll drag my acceleration bar chart down. I'll move this one to the left and I'll make it a little bit wider. Perfect. Now I've got my spark lines, my trends, my current values. Now it's a little bit taller now, so I'll give myself a little bit more vertical space. I'll drag these symbols down to give myself a little bit more room. And I'll make that a little bit taller. Perfect. So now my visuals are getting really close to being exactly the way I want. I'll move my acceleration bar chart up. I'll make it full width. And the last thing I'll do here is that I will set these pieces of visual content to all have the same display time. So that now as I'm moving through these and I'm scanning each of them, um, as the time increases or as I'm going back and forth looking at each of them, they'll all be synchronized. So I'll click each of them and I'll hit shared time. If I didn't, I could absolutely leave it locked at a certain very important time range, like a reference event. But in this case, I want this to be real time. So I'll hit shared time and perfect. That's it. I've arranged this exactly the way I know my users want. I'll give them access to the time control. And now I have the option of picking what name I want for this. So I'll call this my machine 74656 display. I'll share this with my entire team, that whole connect group who can use visualization services. And just like before, I'll link this to the asset. So anyone who goes to this will be able to see this display right off the bat and use it immediately because it's going to be that default view for anyone who's looking at this asset. Now, anyone who wants to see this data in data services, of course, they had the asset explorer. But now, thanks to all these content items I've created, they have this rich interactive dashboard that takes that data, displays it in a completely different format that now they can access from anywhere where they have a secure cloud connection. And that does mean that they can use their laptops, their desktops, their servers. But if they want to see this exact same dashboard on a mobile device, they can see that too. And you can see it's going to automatically rearrange and reshape each of those pieces of visual content, my trends, my uh, status boards to fit this device, whether it's a tablet or a phone. I didn't need to do anything else. I can carry this display. My users can access it from anywhere where they need to. And again, this started with that data in data services those real-time streams, and now we used visualization services to serve that up to our users in these real-time dashboards. And so if your users are looking to do the same, if you have folks who are asking for this kind of remote visibility, who want to take that data that's being synced to the cloud in data services and access it being real-time cloud dashboards, use visualization services for that. Thank you.